Welcome everyone and thank you for tuning in to hear my trading and market updates. This is Uncle Frank and I'm not a financial advisor, nor is any of the content to be construed as financial advice. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. Please remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed the presentation and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're alerted when I have new information to share. So now let's get into the latest updates. Hey, welcome back everyone. Get out a pen, get out your calendar because we have lots of events coming up you're going to want to know about and I've got them all in this episode. I can't tell you what's going to happen guys, but I can promise you my subscribers won't be surprised by any of it. You guys are going to love this one. Well, the chickens are finally coming home to roost from the New York Times two years after its default. China Evergrande may finally meet its end. From the New York Times, a Hong Kong judge could set in motion the liquidation of the property developer, which was once considered one of China's most successful companies. From the article, once China's most prolific property developer, China Evergrande may soon be its biggest and messiest corporate breakup. In a Hong Kong courtroom on Monday, a bankruptcy judge could force Evergrande to liquidate and pay back creditors who are owed tens of billions of dollars. It would mark an end to, a two, to two years of limbo for investors who lent Evergrande money in Hong Kong and have tried to negotiate for a piece of the debt-saddled corporate behemoth that defaulted in early December 2021. Okay, that hearing starts tomorrow. Let's put that shit on the calendar. Okay, here we go. Monday's December 4th, Evergrande appears in bankruptcy court. You heard that one. Now, December 4th through the 8th, are we going to hear anything about the XRP settlement hearing with the SEC from last week? That's huge. Tuesday, December 5th. S&P U.S. Services, PMI, and job openings. Wednesday, December 6th, ADP employment and U.S. trade deficit, but also GameStop earnings, the one that started it all after the close. That's going to be huge for AMC as well. Thursday, December 7th, initial jobless claims and consumer credit, and here's a big one. Friday, December 8th, the U.S. employment report, rate, and consumer sentiment. And what's going on at our theaters this coming week? Freaking Die Hard is dropping Friday night. Guys, I want you to know, I like the stock, I love the company, and I hate the decisions of senior management. If you feel the same way, you don't have to feel bad about that. That just makes you a shareholder activist. You want senior management to enact policies that enhance shareholder value. Isn't that why we buy stocks in the first place? Just remember, CEOs and boards come and go. Hell, Adam himself mysteriously disappeared from the Norwegian Cruise Line board recently. He also tweeted he left the Centricus board. Maybe some other women Adam texted his junk to will come forward. You never know. Okay, now let's talk about next week. This one is going to be insane. For those of you who follow the channel, you all know Uncle Frank can do fundamental analysis, technical analysis, but I developed my own technique I call time windows, which is basically a window on the calendar where there could be a convergence of events that hold the potential for sudden unexpected results. I try to line up the windows with technical events, especially the work the fractal guys do like BAM. You see, it's easy to spot the swans in the air. They're everywhere, but forecasting when they're going to land, that's what I'm trying to do over here. Well, Uncle Frank lives for weeks like this. Tuesday and Wednesday, December 12th and 13th, we get the Fed Reserve meeting. But Wednesday, December 13th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, that's when Fed Chair Powell will have his press conference, okay? Tuesday, December 12th, we get CPI, Consumer Price Index. Wednesday, December 13th, we get PPI, or the Producer Price Index. Thursday is no slouch either. Initial jobless claims. U U.S. retail sales. Okay, business inventories. This is one hell of a week. 
Okay, and you've got to keep an eye on it. If something unexpected lands right in the middle of it, we could see some action. And what's dropping at the theater next Friday? We got Willy Wonka, American Fiction, that won the People's Choice Award and has a 95 score from Rotten Tomatoes, and another flick named The Zone of Interest, which ironically is another thing you can call a time window. Okay, let's get to Swan Watch and build on that Evergrande bankruptcy case from Daily Express. Chinese economy in meltdown as millions default in echoes of 2008 financial crash. China is facing a severe economic crisis as a record number of borrowers face defaults in echoes of the 2008 global financial crash. Defaults by borrowers in China have surged to an unprecedented level since the COVID pandemic as the country faces huge economic challenges. Official records show a staggering 8.54 million people in China, primarily between the ages of 18 and 59, are officially blacklisted for missing payments on various financial obligations, ranging from home mortgages to business loans. This figure has sharply risen from 5.7 million defaulters in early 2020 as lockdowns and economic restrictions stemming from the pandemic significantly impacted economic growth and household incomes. The surge in defaults, equivalent to about 1% of working age Chinese adults, poses a considerable risk to the world economy, making the situation worse for individuals China also does not have any personal bankruptcy laws, intensifying the financial and social repercussions of escalating debt. And from Benzinga, <laughs> Fed Reserve to implement six rate cuts in 2024 amid economic slowdown, says ING. In light of a decelerating economy, ING Economics is forecasting a series of interest rate reductions by the Fed in 2024. What happened? This strategic move involving six rate cuts is a response to the current economic slowdown, with the first cut expected the second quarter of 2024 and continuing into 2025. According to a report by Business Insider, the rationale behind these anticipated cuts stems from a combination of factors, including subdued inflation, a less dynamic job market, and a less optimistic consumer spending outlook. The chief international economist at ING, James Knightley, explained, quote, we have modest growth and cooling inflation and a cooling labor market. Exactly what the Fed wants to see. Just so you guys know, this is all good in the hood for AMC. God forbid we have to wait this long to win on this trade, but lower rates means more refinancing and widening margins for the largest theater business in the world. And now a piece from Seeking Alpha. Paramount, is Apple ready to buy this streaming kingmaker? Believe it or not, we want to see more headlines like this, especially while our business is recovering strongly and Disney is flopping around like a woke fish on land. From the article, Para acquisition chatter is heating up after the company announced modifications to its executive severance pay as well as talks to bundle streaming with Apple. I believe Paramount is worth multiples of its current valuation in an acquisition scenario using some of parts analysis. So this looks like Apple may be making a move on Paramount, and this is all good news for our sector. And from Zero Hedge over the weekend, Powell comments send everything soaring. Gold hits all-time high. Dollar plummets as market prices in rate cuts. After November's furious melt-up, which saw the S&P rise by 9%, the NASDAQ was up an even more ludicrous 11%, which was the best November for the stock market since 1980, 
All eyes were on Jay Powell today to see if the Fed chair would say anything to, set, to stem the surging stock market tide following the month, which saw the biggest easing in financial conditions on record, equivalent to nearly four rate cuts. Guys, they want this rally to go away, and I hope it keeps rallying right in their faces. And I just got this email in from the rap. Beyonce's Renaissance kicks off December box office with a $21 million opening. AMC is hoping for long legs for this latest concert film, while Godzilla Minus One also arrives to an $11 million launch. Guys, it's also my job to prepare you for bad news. In this example, what narratives the hedgies are going to pay their contacts in the financial press to push at us? Look at the article on the right from Variety. Christmas at the box office hinges on Aquaman 2. Movie theater owners are worried. All right, what are they talking about here? We don't have an avatar for Christmas. It's true. But for the fourth quarter, we did add a new distribution business, and that includes Taylor Swift and Beyonce, right? Now join me on the right from Financial World. This hit piece is titled Cinema's Crisis. November box office hits a new low. This is by Farouk. Imovich, try to find any of these guys. They're all out of the country. This is just a hit piece from the article. November, typically a month synonymous with blockbuster releases and robust office sales, has witnessed a notable slump this year. Dubbed Slovember by industry analysts, the month saw a significant decrease in revenue for domestic theaters. According to Comscore, a research firm specializing in box office data, Theaters grossed approximately $553.6 million in November of 2023. This figure represents a 12% drop from the previous year and is markedly short of the pre-pandemic levels. They just keep beating on that over and over again, which often neared the billion-dollar mark. Now, guys, there's no mention that our third quarter was the best quarter we've ever seen in our 103-year history. He continues, the decline is particularly evident when comparing this year's Thanksgiving holiday corridor, a period spanning from the Wednesday before Thanksgiving to the Sunday after, which grossed $173 million. Okay, that's a fair comparison. But now here comes the reason I read these articles to my viewers. While this is an improvement over last year's figures, did you hear that? This is an improvement over last year's figures. It falls short of the 270 million average typical before 2020. Okay, okay, I get it. But, you know, did they have a writer's strike? Did they have an actor's strike? Anyway, these kind of comments are are what they're really afraid of. You know, they, they want, they hate that we keep improving. This is one of the reasons I stuck with my trade on the stock. I can actually feel how desperate they are for the apes to sell and how far they'll go out of their way to dampen any good results, you know, we produce. Hey, I want to thank you for watching, and please remember to hit the like button after this slide if you enjoyed the presentation. Subscribe to the channel and set the alert so you're notified when I have new information to share. See you at the bell.